Hi, this is Lance Culver. And this video is part two of how to create an automatic targeting system in TieFlow. If you haven't seen the first video, please follow the link that's on the screen now or check the description. But picking up right where I left off, I'm going to change it a little bit here and I'm going to grab the set target rotation and force operators and drag them into a new event. I'll make a copy of this display, put it in here, change the color, and I'm going to change this to finding target. Use a send out operator in here. I'm going to go ahead and change the timing. Give it maybe 25 frames before it kicks in. Connect that to the finding target event. So as of right now, it's going to target the very closest particle. And I'm going to set it up so it targets one particle, stays locked on that particle until it's destroyed, and then it will target another particle add a property test into this event and under the test type I'm going to change it to has valid target. I'll say if it is greater than zero and I'll change the channel to target. So essentially the property test is going to see if, if the particles that are being evaluated have a valid target then it'll send them into a new event. If not it won't. I'm going to go ahead and grab this rotation and the force operators and drag them into a new event. Connect that to the property test. Shut this off. Right. So they found a valid target and they're both targeting. So now they're staying locked on the first particle they targeted. So now I can add a spawn operator into this event. Go ahead and rename this shooting. So if I scrub through here, I'm going to see that the spawn operator is creating one offspring for each of these two particles. But what I really want is just to spawn this particle. So how I can do that is to just come over, select the, the original scene object, and then come over to the Modify tab, click on the drop down here, and come down and add a tie properties. And add a new channel called 2. You can leave the value at 1. And then in the spawn operator, under filters, you can enable filters. Click Add. Change the property type to Custom Float. And then I can say if it is equal to 1 in channel 2. And so now you can see that only the tube is spawning a particle. Now obviously this isn't what I want, but it's a start. Increase the offspring to maybe 20. So now drop a shape operator into a new event. Go ahead and change that to 3D and leave it a tetrahedron. Connect that to the spawn. Lower this back. Alright, so there's you can see there's some particles being spawned. So next add a spread in here. So here under random spread, I'm gonna reduce that to zero. And then turn off this master control. And increase and increase the Z value to maybe 10 centimeters. And I also increase the Z value for the particle offset to 10 centimeters, maybe 15. And we're going to change the coordinates to particle space. Increase that to 20 centimeters. All right now I can add a speed operator and change the direction to particle Z and increase the magnitude to maybe 100 centimeters. And reduce the rotation interpolation. Right 
right next I'll add another spread operator in here and I'm going to increase it to maybe eight centimeters I'm going to change the timing to particle age and I'll say between three and maybe ten frames I'm also going to change the spawn mode to per step change the timing as well and change it to event age and maybe give it a seven frame delay all right now these are all physics objects but you can kind of see here some of the particles are passing through the sphere that's because they're on separate groups right now the this bullets Right now the bullets, and that's because the sentry gun particles are on simulation group 2 and the enemy particles are on simulation group 1. So what I could do is can enable simulation group 3 for the enemy particles and then add a new particle groups operator into the bullets event and place them on group 3. So we can see now they're making impact. But I don't want them to just hit and fall to the ground like that, so I will add a physics collision. And I'll test for inner particle collisions, enable simulation group one, and then drop a delete into a new event and connect that to the physics collision. So now if these particles do collide with the sphere, they'll just be deleted. I'm also going to add a time test in here. Maybe after 25 frames or so, we'll just go ahead and delete these. So then we're not simulating them forever. And so next I'll add a physics collision into the enemy's event. And I will again test for inner particle collisions and enable simulation group three. All right, I can drop a display into a new event. Connect that to the enemy's event. And so now, all right. So we can see that this particle has fallen, and even though it's not the target, it so met the conditions that we set it. up in the physics collision operator. Is so it's been sent into this new event time step to maybe one half frame. might also just increase the interpolation on the rotation just a little bit. 0.25. Okay, so the sentry gun has downed its target, but it's continuing to fire upon its target. So what I need to do is, is tell it once this target is down, search for a new target. So to set that up, the first thing I need to do is get rid of the target. Can add a Voronoi fracture into this event and that will create several new particles and delete the original one at the same time, which creates a new issue. Now that the target is no longer valid, the rotation operator no longer has an effect on the centrigan particle. So what I need to do is grab this property test and make a copy and drag it down into this shooting event. Drag this down some, and I can say if it is less than one particle, and leave the channel as target, I can connect that back to this finding target event. And so now, what you can see is it's selecting this particle to target, but that's because it's on the same simulation group. So really I just need to add a new particle groups operator into this event. And change this to destroyed, and then place these particles on group 4. This is the resting position of the sentry gun. Maybe it, when it's done killing all the enemies, it goes back to that position. And that would just be easy enough to drop a custom properties into this event here beneath the surface test. And I can come down here under TM data and choose position rotation. And just create a new channel called the TM. 
you can make a copy of this custom properties and drag it in here beneath the set target. I'll change the operation to get. And I'll reduce the interpolation here to 0.15 and change the timing to continuous. Once it's done destroying its enemies, it will return to its resting position. So what we're basically doing is this custom properties is recording the position and rotation data for these two particles on event entry, or in this case on frame zero. And this custom properties in the finding target event is retrieving that data every frame and is trying to apply it every frame for as long as the particles are in this event. And if they have a target, they're sent into the shooting event. Okay, well that's gonna about wrap it up for this. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If there was any problems or something you're not quite understanding or you're not getting the results I'm getting, feel free to leave a comment. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, I hope you have a great day. Take care, and we'll see you next time.